Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 2.3 in solving inequalities with multiplication or division. And uh, we're going to ask this essential question. How do you use division to solve inequality? Well, it's really multiplication and division, as the title of the, itch of the lesson tells you. Um, and I've said this before, and I think it bears repeating. Multiplication and division are really the same thing. Division is just multiplication of an inverse number, of an inverse number. So uh, the rules of uh, whatever applies to multiplication applies to division because they're really the same thing. Um, so that's a, a big idea to get around. Let's get started. Uh, so first, ah, this thing. Sorry about that. Okay, so first we want to talk about, um, I, I've said in the past that um, inequalities and equations are kind of like cousins. But this is where it kind of, kind of diverges a little bit when it comes to the multiplication and division properties. Because we have different kind of like rules because the relationships are different when we multiply or, or uh, divide by positive and negative numbers. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through this lesson. So this first part has to do if you're multiplying or dividing by a positive number. C is greater than zero. That's the number we're going to multiply by. And we'll take a look here. And uh, <clears throat> let's look at the first example. This one here, I'll just kind of redo it over here. Negative six is less than eight, which is a true statement, of course, right? Um, this says, if I multiply both sides by a positive 2, my inequality still stays uh, the same. In other words, the left, side it, the left side is still less than the right side. Negative 12 is less than 16. Uh, when it comes to uh, div uh, division, let's look at this example for division. 6 is greater than negative 8. A true statement. If I divide both sides by a positive number, in this case a positive 2, I left 3 is greater than negative 4. Still a true statement. Still a true statement. So essentially what this is saying is if we're multiplying or dividing by a positive number, just keep everything the same just like you've been doing it. We'll talk about the exception in a few minutes. Of course, these properties are true for the, the equal parts, too. The less than and equal or greater than and equal. Okay, so let's take a, take, take a look at a few examples here. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, A, X divided by 8 is greater than negative 5. I'm going to multiply both sides by a positive 8. And I get left with x is greater than negative 40. Okay, so 0, negative 10, 20, 30, 40, negative 40. Open circle, and we're graphing to the right. What numbers that are greater than negative 40? For example, b, negative 24 is greater than or equal to 3 times x. I can divide both sides by a positive 3 here. And that gives me negative 8 is greater than or equal to x. And if I wanted to uh, think about this again, if I, if I want to flip this around for graphing, x is less than or equal to negative 8. Um, so let's see. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 8. Let's call that negative 8. Um, solid dot and we want the numbers that are less than negative eight so we're going to the left and we put boxes around our solutions because well that's the part that says that's the one you want me to grade so we'll make sure we put boxes around our solutions okay so let's talk about uh negative numbers here let's talk about negative numbers we're dividing or multiplying by numbers that are less than zero in order to solve. So we have to take a look at the effect of what that has. So we know that when we uh, divide by a negative number, a positive divided by a negative becomes a negative. A negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. So signs start changing around. So let's take a look at this first example here. So negative 6 is less than 8. 
Now, if I multiply both sides by a negative 2, in this case, a negative number, let's take a look at what happens here. This side is negative 12. This side becomes, um, I'm sorry, this side's positive 12. This side is negative 16, right? Now, which side is less? The right side is less. So we have to reverse our inequality symbol around. That is the one big difference between equations and inequalities, multiplying or dividing by negative number. This little section right here, this is a very important, uh, a very important lesson because this is the, the exception to what we've done before. Six is greater than negative eight. Okay, so we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. A positive divided by a negative becomes a negative. A negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. Which side is less? This, the left side. All right, so we have to, uh, we have to reverse the inequality symbol around when we multiply or divide by a um, negative number. Okay. And again, that's multiplying or dividing both sides. So it's in, the, in my examples here, it's the red numbers. It's the one I'm dividing by or multiplying by. Okay. So a lot of kids get that's confused. They'll see like a negative eight here and they want to reverse the inequality symbol. Again, it's not this number. It's the ones I have here in red. Okay. Let's take a look at some examples here. Um, let's see. I think I can just move this one. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, negative 3 in this case, right? Because I want to isolate that y. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1, so this is a y. Over here, a positive 2 times a negative 3. This positive side now becomes negative. So I have to reverse my inequality symbols around. So negative 6 is greater than y, or I can say y is less than negative 6, if that helps you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Let's make this negative 6. 6, 4. 6, 4, 2, 0. Let's make this 0. Uh, so y is less than negative 6, so it would be going in this direction. Okay, the uh, example B. Again, let me just move this so I don't have to rewrite it. Oops. Oh, that's not going to work. Sorry about that. Okay, so negative 7y is less than or equal to negative 35. I'm going to edit that out in post. Not really. I don't edit any of these. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 7 here. What does that give me? Y on this side. This negative side, this negative 35 side, becomes a positive 5. So I have to reverse that inequality symbol around. So you're going to look, so what, what happened here? In the original, in the, in the original uh, equation, both sides are negative, right? Assuming y is positive. But both sides are negative, but now they both change signs. So um, that's, that's the other thing, is the side changes from positive to negative. So y is greater than negative 5. Um, I won't waste time graphing that. Let's move on. Oops. Ah, so touchy. Here we go. Uh, example 3 from page 70. You are 950 per hour at your summer job. Write and solve an inequality that represents the number of hours you need to work to buy a digital camera that costs 247. All right. Well, what is that saying? That is saying that uh, 247 is kind of like our goal, but whatever we earn, so when, whatever we earn on the left side, whatever we earn has to be greater than or equal to 247. Well, 950 per hour times, what are we looking for? The number of hours. So this is be 9.5 times, I'll use H for hours. Um, I'll go ahead, go ahead and let you finish solving that out. Um, it, is, it is in the book. And 
comes out to be like 26 or something like that. Actually, let me uh, let me bring up my calculator here. So unprofessional. 247 divided by 9.5, 26. Yeah. So H is greater than or equal to 26. So you need to work 26 or more hours. So um, when we answer the question here, when it says, okay, so this is write and solve. Okay, so the, the, we're not asked to actually answer this question. We're just asked to write and solve this inequality. So there's the first part, there's the inequality, and there's the solution. Sometimes they'll ask you the question, how many hours do you need to work? And then in this case, the answer would be 26 or more. Okay, so before you go, go ahead and pause it and solve these, and I'll have you put the answers into the, uh, into the pod. Otherwise, um, if you have any questions, contact me through Jupiter Grades or email, and have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.